My name is Bobby. A strange creature has arrived at the house of Collinwood. A relative. One with evil intentions, who seems very hot under the collar. Picture the beautiful phoenix, flying from century to century. It doesn't grow old for a hundred years, and then it hears death calling. Hi, death. It builds a nest upon the highest palm tree. Then the sun beats down upon the dry nest. It starts to smolder. The phoenix fans the spark until the whole thing is ablaze. The whole bird is consumed to flame, and from the ashes, the phoenix is reborn. Hi, I'm Bobby, and welcome to Dusty Old Movies. When I went to the Dark Shadows convention, I was all excited to meet Barnabas and Angelique and Josette, and then I saw that Diana Mele, who played Laura Collins, was going to be there. And I didn't know who she was. After seeing her, I could kind of vaguely remember her from 1897, but I didn't even bother to get their autograph. However, if I had seen the Phoenix storyline before the convention, I would have been first in line to get it. For the episodes, the Phoenix storyline is episode 123 to 192, and for the DVDs, it's Dark Shadows the Beginning, volume 4, through Dark Shadows the Beginning, volume 6. It's a storyline that turned Dark Shadows from an ordinary soap opera into a horror classic. When Dan Curtis first created Dark Shadows, it was a gothic romance with an air of mystery, but it was still very much a normal soap opera with normal soap opera plots, and the ratings were a disaster. However, Dan, who loved horror, began incorporating the supernatural into the story. First there was a ghost here and then a ghost there, and that made the ratings go up, and that gave him all the ammunition he needed to give the directive, let's make Dark Shadows as scary and as spooky as possible. Meanwhile, writer Malcolm Mommerstein was looking ahead at what the next storyline was going to be, and it said Laura Collins, the wife of Roger Collins, has been in the mental institution for her alcoholism. <gasps> An alcoholic on Dark Shadows! And now, she was going back to Collinsport to fight for custody of her son David. Malcolm thought this was a little dull, but what struck him was that Laura was coming from Phoenix, Arizona, so he said how about she's a phoenix coming from Phoenix? And everyone said, what's that? And then he explained there was a mythical bird that lights itself on fire every hundred years and then is reborn. And Laura could be a human version of that. Dan and the writers were pumped. This sounded so new and exciting. Diana Mele was cast as Laura. And now this once normal soap opera had to have firemen on set because they were doing fire special effects. Laura Collins would not only be the first supernatural villain on Dark Shadows, but on all of daytime TV. After being gone for years and being in a sanitarium, Laura Collins, Roger's wife, returns to Collinwood. Roger and Sam Evans are concerned that she will testify at a new trial for Burke Devlin, and that's what Burke is hoping for. But Laura says she's come back for one reason alone, her son David. However, what she does not reveal is that she is actually a phoenix, and when she burns herself alive, she wants her son to burn alive with her. Before long, strange things start occurring. David has nightmares about his mother. Sam Evans feels compelled to paint a portrait of Laura being consumed by fire. And there is a dead body in Phoenix that is positively identified as Laura Collins. Because of this air of mystery, Elizabeth Collins' daughter tells Laura to leave Collinwood and refuses to let her have David. However, Laura uses her powers to put Elizabeth into a trance. The parapsychologist Dr. Peter Guthrie is called in to help, and Dr. Guthrie, Vicky, and the others try to find out the truth of Laura Collins. I love this story, and what makes it fascinating is how they introduce a supernatural villain into a normal soap opera world, and essentially make it a trial run for Barnabas. Because Laura was originally conceived when Dark Shadows was still normal, the Phoenix stuff is intertwined with the original idea of Laura wanting custody of David. Now when we first meet her, she's at the diner, and she out of nowhere explains to Maggie Evans what a Phoenix is. Kind of like what I do with Dark Shadows. And that sets the supernatural tone for the story. And then a creepy thing will happen here, and a mysterious thing will happen there, and the spooky Phoenix stuff 
escalates as the story goes on, which is a really suspenseful way to do it. However, when things are a little slow, like in the earlier part of the story, we still have that custody plot to latch onto, and since I like these characters, I actually find it interesting. But with the added Phoenix subtext, even ordinary scenes can be very chilling. I must take David with me now. Roger, please, I beg you, I haven't much time. What do you mean? It doesn't make any sense. I just mean it's nothing. Along with the combination natural and supernatural plotline being the side effect of the show's transition, so is the normal characters getting to be proactive. Proactive, I don't understand. When Barnabas came on, he went from villain to main character, but here they go the traditional route and keep Laura as the clear-cut antagonist. So unlike Barnabas, she's able to lose, and the normal characters get to try to stop her. Vicky conducts a seance, and Joe Haskell helps dig up a grave, and even figures out the night that Laura is going to strike. I can't believe this. I know this is going to sound stupid, but I'm really scared. Not only is it exciting to see these average Joes <laughs> go out of their element and fight a supernatural force, which is very dangerous for them, but it is also a Dark Shadows novelty, because it's the first and last time that we'll ever see this happen which helps make the story a standout. Also making the story a standout are the great and more down-to-earthly played characters. This story has some great characters, and while Laura Collins may not be the most remembered Dark Shadows villain, she certainly is the hottest. I'd make another joke, but why add fuel to the fire? Laura Collins is a phoenix who has been reincarnated every hundred years. She has the power to telepathically mess with people and to spontaneously create fire. Diana Maley is perfect in this role. She has piercing eyes, a quiet strength, and there's also something undefinably odd about her. When she went on the audition, she was already a veteran actress. And she told the producer, Bob Gustell, I'm not going to audition for you. But then she looked at the Phoenix monologue, the one I performed earlier. And she said, I have to read this for you. And then when he told her, you've got the part, she said, thank heavens, because I am a Phoenix. That eccentricity shines through, and it gives her otherworldly quality, even during normal conversations. Diana was also pregnant, and that mothering instinct shines through, and you feel her love for David. But she also wants to bring him into the fire, and that's what makes her so scary. You're not afraid of the fire, are you, darling? There's nothing to fear. Just come to me and trust me. Once you're in my arms, everything will be complete. When Laura first appears, it's a mother against mother, with her initial adversary being David's aunt, who has been fulfilling the mother role. The matriarch of Collinwood, Elizabeth Collins Stoddard, is played by Joan Bennett. Joan was a huge star in the 30s and 40s. They gave her the biggest dressing room on Dark Shadows, and she got paid the most. Hey Joan, do you want to go to Urbox? But oddly enough, she tended to be underused on the show, but this is my favorite Elizabeth story. Joan had children, and several of the young actresses on the show described Joan as being like a mother, and that warm side of her shines through in her scenes with David. She also projects the stern protectiveness of him, and I especially love her scenes with Laura, because in terms of strength of spirit, they are both equally matched. I'm concerned about what you're doing to David. My patience is at an end, and I'm asking you to leave. And then when Laura puts the whammy on her, and she's begging Vicky to protect David and going in and out of the delirium, it honestly reminded me of when my great-grandmother was dying. It was that effective. The storm! The bird! Fire! Fire! Along with Elizabeth giving the story weight, so does the parapsychologist Dr. Peter Guthrie, played by John LaSalle. Dr. Guthrie goes up against Laura, and he seems intelligent, a little dorky, and he seems to have trouble memorizing his lines. Join the club. And overall, he doesn't have the pizzazz that Professor Stokes would later have. However, this mild-mannered approach makes him seem like a real and respectable parapsychologist. 
He even tape records the seance he conducts so that he can actually study the evidence and draw logical conclusions. And it gives him validity, and it makes it more interesting when he puts the pieces together. I've never seen anything like Mrs. Dotted's illness. Not in this world. Are there others? There might be. Haven't you ever considered the possibility of another world? I feel the possibilities of this world are so infinite that I find it difficult to conceive of another. You may be able to help me in learning about your sister-in-law's illness. Well, not if you go around looking in other worlds, because I am strictly part of this one. But as you just commented, the possibilities of this world are infinite. Along with the actors and characters giving the story drama and reality, so does the story's spookiness. This story is one of the spookiest on Dark Shadows. Later, the series tended to homage the Universal Horror films, but this story seems like a Val Luden horror movie with a focus on mystery and realism. A mother wanting her son to burn alive is such a creepy concept, because even though she's supernatural, mothers who snap and kill their kids is a real thing, and so is dying in the fire. So you can understand the horror that the characters are experiencing. But Vicky, that clipping about the woman who died in the fire. Her son David burned alive. He didn't want to be saved. He wanted to burn in his mother's arms. Add to that a lot of mystery. Like what is causing Sam Evans to paint the portrait of Laura Collins in fire. And the more realistic approach to the characters. And you have a very relatable and very spooky story. And the climax is perhaps the scariest scene in all Dark Shadows. The story raised the ratings so much that it was renewed. However, due to Diana Melee's pregnancy, the story had to be cut short, forcing Dan Curtis and the writers to find some new way to top it. They came up with a vampire. Dan Curtis offered Diana Melee other roles in Dark Shadows, but she would only reappear as other incarnations of Laura Collins, because she felt that otherwise it would take away from the power of the character. This story isn't as talked about as much, because it's part of that first year, which is without Barnabas, and it has kind of a shaky reputation. But this is the highlight of that year. And there is no other Dark Shadow story quite like it. And I give it four hot mamas out of four. Thank you for watching Dusty Old Movies, and have a magnificently macabre day.